Welcome to Water Level. Today we are taking a detailed look at the current water levels of Lake Powell and Lake Mead, two of the most critical reservoirs in the United States, both fed by the Colorado River system. As of September 18, 2025, Lake Powell is sitting at an elevation of 3,546.01 feet above mean sea level. This is nearly 154 feet below the designated full pool level of 3,700 feet. That drop highlights just how stressed the reservoir still is despite seasonal inflows earlier this year. In comparison, Lake Mead, as of September 19, 2025, is holding at 1,056.81 feet. That is about 172 feet below its full pool of 1,229 feet. Both of these levels are a stark reminder of the long-term drought pressures, water demand shifts, shaping the future of the Colorado River Basin. Looking first at Lake Powell, the data shows the reservoir has actually been on a steady decline in recent weeks. Just since yesterday, Powell dropped by another 0.14 feet, continuing a downward trend as summer releases outpace inflows. Earlier this year, we saw Powell rise in the late spring as snowmelt from the Rockies began flowing in. But since peaking in early summer, the water level has steadily fallen, leaving us again with the challenge of maintaining enough storage to support power generation at Glen Canyon Dam and downstream obligations to Lake Mead. At its current elevation, Powell remains just above the minimum power pool of 3,490 feet, but that margin isn't as large as it may seem. If the reservoir were to drop another 56 feet, the ability to generate hydropower at Glen Canyon would be at risk. Turning to Lake Mead, the picture looks somewhat more stable, though far from ideal. Today's level of 1,056.81 feet marks only a slight increase of 0.01 feet compared to yesterday. This stability comes after months of slow declines earlier in the year. Mead's levels tend to fluctuate less dramatically than Powell's, largely because of its massive storage capacity, but also because it receives water that has already been regulated upstream. Still, with the level more than 170 feet below full pool, it is a sobering indicator of just how depleted the river system has become. When we compare this year's numbers to previous years, the story becomes clearer. Lake Powell's current line for 2025 is trending slightly higher than where it stood in 2022, which was one of the lowest points on record, but still lower than in 2024 when a stronger runoff helped boost the reservoir. On the chart, you can see 2021 and 2020 sitting well above current levels, emphasizing the long-term decline. Similarly, at Lake Mead, the 2025 line sits below where it was in 2021 and 2020, but above the crisis low levels of 2022. This pattern shows some recovery from the very worst lows, but not nearly enough to declare the system healthy. One of the biggest concerns with these water levels is their impact on hydroelectric power generation. Glen Canyon Dam at Lake Powell and Hoover Dam at Lake Mead both rely on high enough elevations to push water through turbines effectively. At lower levels, not only is less power generated, but the strain on the electrical grid in the southwest increases. Millions of people across Arizona, Nevada, and California depend on that power. The closer these reservoirs get to minimum power pool thresholds, the greater the concern for both reliability and cost of electricity in the region. Beyond power generation, water supply is the other pressing issue. Lake Mead directly serves as the water source for millions of residents in cities like Las Vegas, Phoenix, and Los Angeles, as well as for agriculture across the desert southwest. With the reservoir sitting at just over 1,056 feet, it is operating under shortage conditions. These shortages trigger mandatory cutbacks in water deliveries to states that rely on the Colorado River under interstate agreements. Farmers in Arizona, for example, have already felt the pinch of reduced allocations, and urban water managers are continuing to push for conservation measures. For Lake Powell, the management challenges are just as complicated. Not only must it store water to deliver downstream to Mead, but it also has to maintain enough water to protect its own infrastructure. 
the delicate balance of releases and storage is constantly being negotiated among states, tribes, and federal agencies. With Powell now 154 feet below full pool, every decision about how much water to release carries enormous weight. Releasing too much could further endanger its own power generation capacity, while releasing too little could exacerbate shortages downstream. Looking at seasonal trends, both lakes typically see their highest levels in late spring to early summer, fueled by snowmelt. That was the case again this year, with Powell rising sharply around May and June before dropping back down through late summer. Mead, however, showed much less of a rise this year, reflecting how much of the inflow is captured and consumed upstream before it ever reaches Hoover Dam. As we move further into fall, the inflow season is behind us, and both lakes are now relying on management strategies rather than natural boosts to hold steady. The Colorado River Basin has been experiencing a long-term mega-drought, which studies suggest is the worst in more than 1,200 years. Reduced snowpack, warmer winters, and hotter summers mean that not only is less water reaching the reservoirs, but evaporation is higher as well. Even in years with decent snowpack, the runoff efficiency is lower because drier soils and hotter air absorb more water before it ever reaches the lakes. This dynamic helps explain why reservoirs like Powell and Mead have struggled to rebound fully despite occasional wet years. The human side of this story is also important. Communities that rely on these lakes for recreation and tourism have seen marinas dry up and boat ramps closed. Lake Powell, once famous for houseboating and fishing, has seen fewer access points as water levels recede. Lake Mead has had similar challenges, with the receding shoreline exposing previously submerged landscapes and even historical artifacts. While these changes create new curiosities, they also represent significant losses in economic activity for communities that depend on visitors. Looking ahead, forecasts suggest that without major changes in precipitation patterns or water management policies, both reservoirs will remain under pressure. The Bureau of Reclamation continues to monitor conditions closely, and emergency measures are always on the table if levels approach critical thresholds. These could include further delivery cuts to states, renegotiation of water sharing agreements, or even engineering solutions to maintain hydropower functions at lower levels. It is also worth noting that these reservoirs are connected not just hydrologically, but politically. Decisions made at Lake Powell directly affect Lake Mead and vice versa. For example, higher releases from Powell may temporarily stabilize Mead, but weaken Powell's ability to sustain itself. On the other hand, withholding too much at Powell could leave downstream users short. This delicate balancing act requires constant coordination and often sparks disagreements among the states in the basin. For now, the numbers tell us that both lakes are far below where they need to be. Powell at 3,546 feet and Mead at 1,056 feet are reminders that even with some seasonal recovery, the long-term trajectory remains one of scarcity. Every foot of elevation matters, and every small rise or drop can impact millions of people. The 0.14-foot drop at Powell in just one day may sound small, but stretched over weeks and months, it adds up to massive changes in storage. Likewise, Mead's 0.01-foot rise may seem insignificant, but it highlights just how stable and vulnerable the reservoir is at its current state. Ultimately, the future of both Lake Powell and Lake Mead depends on a combination of nature and policy. If the snowpack in future winters improves significantly, we could see a partial recovery. But unless long-term consumption patterns change, even good runoff years may not be enough to restore the system. Conservation, infrastructure adaptation, and interstate cooperation will all be essential to navigating what comes next. These lakes are not just local resources, they are national symbols of how water and society are deeply intertwined. As we close this update, the key takeaway is that both reservoirs remain in precarious condition. Powell's 3,546 feet level keeps it barely above critical thresholds, while Mead's 1,056 foot level shows stability but still represents a historically low point.
Together, they reflect the urgent reality of water scarcity in the Colorado River Basin. The situation demands not just attention, but action, as every inch of water represents the lifeline of the American Southwest. That wraps up today's update on Lake Mead and Lake Powell water levels. As we've seen, every single foot makes a difference, and these reservoirs continue to shape the future of water, power, and life across the Southwest. We'll keep tracking the numbers closely, so make sure to stay tuned for more updates. If you found this information helpful, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe so you never miss an update.